So OPEC is really confronted with a difficult situation here. You've got, of course, very strong withdrawals, which they had aimed for taking the five-year OECD averages down to five-year average, and they have achieved that. However, in, in, uh, unintentionally so, they have also over-tightened the market to a level where now we are seeing oil prices being well supported towards the $80 level, which is now trying to threaten potentially demand, and that remains a concern for OPEC members and Russia. So here they are moving into summer, summer term, which is a high demand quarter and now they want to basically make sure that the decision that they make in the June meeting does not may involve basically taking oil prices once again towards the $80 or above because that could potentially uh, basically co counteract what they had initially done was to balance the is, market. Is OPEC unified or divided? Most definitely is not unified right now. I think the bigger players or the stronger players, such as Saudi Arabia and Russia, clearly see uh, the bigger picture, which is they do want to bring in those extra barrels, which have to be, which have to help balance otherwise the decline uh, seen from Venezuela, Angola, or even potentially what you might see from Iran in the future. Uh, however, the smaller ones or the producers who cannot basically bring additional barrels, such as Iran and 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 even for that matter Venezuela, are the ones who are objecting to that uh, easing of the barrels. How do you factor in, if at all, uh, Abhishek, um, the fact that China's retaliatory tariffs would include a tariff on oil? Uh, well, what, what it does mean is that if China was to retaliate in terms of uh, tariffs, especially involving U.S. oil, uh, at least that means that OPEC perhaps might, had, ha, might first of all have to consider it in, in the upcoming meeting, but they might have to then perhaps look into that, uh, those, those extra barrels that China perhaps will have to lift from countries outside of U.S. And the first country perhaps one can think of where China might try and get those barrels would be within the OPEC and perhaps from Iran. Uh, and I guess then the question comes back on the table whether Iranian barrels that one is anticipating could be taken off the market because of U.S. sanctions. Would How, how, how many barrels would really get taken off if, if China was to basically compensate for the lost barrels from U.S. through, China, through Iran? What, what about your forecast for the dollar? The dollar has been strengthening. I understand that you're bearish um, on the outlook for oil prices. And does that play into that? How are you forecasting the U.S. dollar? So our U.S. Uh, dollar analysts do expect that the dollar should uh, come off from where, where it is right now. The, the, the recent strength is more idiosyncratic, and rather than that, we do expect the dollar to come off uh, still uh, towards the end of the year. And on, on, although U.S., although oil prices and dollar, uh, the correlation have, has kind of broken off, and oil itself has been driven more by the geopolitics as well as, uh, the, as, well as stronger fundamentals that we have in the market. However, However, uh, if the dollar was to perhaps go, go, uh, go come, come off by the end of the year, it perhaps will have some impact in supporting prices. But overall, I think for the, for the second half of uh, 2018, I do believe that oil perhaps will be driven by what OPEC decides on 22nd of June and also generally speaking where we see fundamentals which is basically getting weaker uh, as we see OPEC's uh, OPEC non-OPEC deal un unlikely to survive yeah. uh, beyond 2018. Weaker fundamentals, uh, less demand. Uh, supply uh, maybe going up or whatever. Where do prices uh, spend most of the second half of the year? So second half, we believe that uh, first of all, our oil price forecast, we are below the forward curve and basically it's our original forecast that we had uh, uh, that we had given early in the year. We haven't really revised 2018 for Brent. So basically we expect Brent to uh, trend towards 63 on average for fourth quarter this year and then towards $59 on average for first mm. quarter 2019 and then gradually recover towards the end of 2019 towards $66 on average for fourth quarter. Uh, but the real pain and the real pressure possibly will come towards the end of the year into first quarter when we see the fundamentals at their weakest. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.